Today I'm going to install a 200 amp service here. This is an underground service. Really doesn't get much easier than this one. First thing I'm doing here is just removing all the covers so that I can have access to everything really easily. One thing you always want to remember is if you remove screws, just put them right back where you got them. Pretty simple. This right here is a blank hub. I'm just putting that in there because this is not an overhead service as I mentioned. It is an underground service. So now each of these meter cans have these knockouts for the screws that go in there. I guess that's to keep water out if you're not using them. I don't know, but sometimes these dies aren't set right. And this one specifically I had to beat the hell out of to get these out, but whatever. Moving on to these knockouts, I have found that this is the easiest way to take these out. I know some people say to use drill bits and put them on the weld. All I do is use these linesman pliers, or hammer as we like to call them, and I just put them right directly on each weld that I'm trying to take off of there. And it just pops right off as you can see right there. It just twists if you're strong enough. I know some of you aren't, but you just put it on there, twist, and it pops right off really easy, really quick. All right, now that I got my panel all knocked out, as you saw, this is where the utility comes in. We'll put a three inch in the bottom here. And then this is a two inch that we go out the back for our SER. So I already know by the layout inside that this was drilled out and a stud was right here. You can also see a seam in the siding here, maybe not on camera, but there's a seam on the siding. So you know there's a stud here. So I can lay this out based on that. And just as a general rule, I like to always hit a stud on one side of these holes. It just makes me feel better as a human to know that that's properly installed. All right, so I just measured off of that, went 16 inches. I know that's gonna be the center of this stud. So now I've got a line here that I can use to mount my meter. So just to hold this up there, I like to attach it with these one inch pan heads. That gets it so that I can draw a nice mark. I messed up. I don't know if you can see this, but I didn't hold it up high enough. Gosh fucking damn it. <clears throat> I didn't hold it up high enough and I hit right in the middle of the Exciting. So now I'm just going to raise it up to where I'm going to hit the siding at a nice spot. Alright, so now it's held up there, it's level, that's where it's going to go. Now all I got to do is mark where this hole is. Use this big old six inch beef stick going into the stud. That ain't going nowhere. All right, so I've got that mounted. Now I'm going to make up this service entrance wire. I've got to mount a ground bar for the utilities to hook up to. I know a lot of you are questioning what I'm doing here with those strippers. What I do is I use those to make a mark. So I like to get all of these made to length. I make a mark with my strippers and then I cut them all off at the same time. One thing I didn't plan on was not having my sawzall. I can ram through these really quickly with a sawzall. As you can see, I'm using a deep throat bandsaw. Uh, it worked, but it wasn't ideal here. I don't really care for ratchet cutters. I've never had them. I know that a sawzall is quicker doing it this way. Now I'm just stripping all these wires out to get them under the lugs. If you'll notice, what I really like to do for efficiency is use the same tool as many times as I can in a row. 
you might say that it doesn't save that much time, but if you save three minutes here, three minutes there, and then you're using that three minutes for production, it adds up really quickly and you can be a lot faster than a lot of people. So everywhere you can gain time, it helps. For those that are wondering, I've never really done service loops. It's not something that I ever come across where I've been like, oh man, that's so nice to have. So the times that it's too short, I just splice onto it and finish the job. Hole's not big enough. I don't have that problem. Stop using drywall screws. Stop using those outside. Use a stainless steel screw or a galvanized screw or a decorated screw instead. Last thing I'm doing here is torquing all these wires. Before I started using a torque wrench, I always thought I was getting these connections tight. But once you use a torque wrench, you realize how tight things need to be. Let me show you something. Look at how smashed those wires are. Look at that. That is torqued to the specs on this tag right here. So I know I'm good to go. And I never used to do that before I torqued them. One last thing is mark it, put the covers on, and that'll wrap up the service. That tells everyone that I have torqued those screws. That's a wrap. Remember, be an electrician. Leave your mess.